Uh, good morning. Um, it really is a privilege and a pleasure to be here today um, to talk about and represent Red Bull um, and the power of earned versus paid media. I guess creating an impression is uh, really at the heart of everything that we do. Um, and we actually take that statement quite literally. And I just want to give you an example of a project that hopefully most of you are aware of, um, where we've brought that to life. Well, that project actually was about 28 years in the making. Um, and it actually goes back to the origins of how Red Bull came to be. And in the early 80s, there was a, a manager that used to look after a, a Germanic toothbrush brand called Blendax. And he used to have the responsibilities for the Asian region. And on his frequent trips to Asia, he was surprised um, by the effi efficiency and effectiveness of the small energy tonics that he was given by his colleagues to overcome jet lag. Um, and this gave him the energy that he needed to get on with his, his corporate life. And he was really taken by this. And he decided that he was going to take a risk at, a, at the age of about 42, 43. And what he did was he then quit his job. And he went back to Austria to literally develop a new beverage category. Um, and a functional beverage called Red Bull was brought to the fore, and he went out and he met with a friend of his, Johannes Kastner, um, who ran a small advertising agency. And between the two of them, they worked, out on a, they worked on and worked out a marketing strategy that would really try and explain the product's proposition. But after a number of months, the relationship got quite strained and tenuous because they couldn't find a strap line that would really encapsulate everything that the brand stood for. And as the legend goes, at 3 a.m. one morning, Johannes called him and said, I've got it, I've got it, Red Bull gives you wings. Um, and that literally was the beginning and the birth of the brand as we know it today. Um, the head and the founder, who's still very involved, is a gentleman by the name of Dietrich Mateschitz, certainly got a risk-taking marketing philosophy that has really propelled this brand to new heights. Um, and the company has grown from one market in 1987, which was Austria, to about 168 markets today. And the great news for us is that we've been struggling and at last we're going to launch in China in 2014. Um, the actual brand success story, I think, for Red Bull goes back to the fact that we really have listened to what and who our consumers are and really identified with their needs and really gone out as a brand to support them in any way, shape, and form that we can to really instill the concept of supplying energy, um, but in the same breath, helping them develop within their chosen disciplines. Um, if you look at the fact that this was a very successful beverage launch, I think some of the, the key success factors have been the fact that it's a, it's a product that really works. We've always had premium pricing. Um, there's certainly a unique marketing strategy around it, and most importantly, from, from my perspective anyways, this global consistency that the brand has. And the way that, Mark, that Red Bull is marketed all around the world, we follow the same model. Um, what we try and do to bring the brand promise together is to connect the brand and the product together under the strap line of Red Bull gives you wings. Um, and the brand promise is, for us, it's a translation of vitalized body and mind. 
It really sets out to inspire. Um, and, we, and it's really backed with symbolism. You know, the universal dream of mankind has always been flight. So our marketing approach, we have this complicated marketing wheel, which is broken into four key quadrants, which is event marketing, our communication strategy, opinion leader programs, and a consumer collecting program. But at the heart of it all is that we really strive to create and generate word of mouth. And this is central to everything that we do. Um, we believe in, you know, word of mouth is certainly the oldest and the best media in the world. And it's uh, our entire marketing wheel that brings the world of Red Bull together, that we can deliver this in a cohesive plan. Um, if we go into the first quadrant, which is uh, Red Bull Communications, this is really about positioning our brand to create and generate awareness and ultimately to build brand image. And we do this in two ways. This is through our cartoon ads, which really reflect the brand's personality. Um, the commercials have never tried to explain the product benefits. Um, the campaign intends to entertain and capture our consumer's imagination. And it's really distinctive and timeless um, style. It really helps to establish it beyond trend or demographic. But what we have found over the last about six or seven years is that we could actually use another means to bring the world of Red Bull to life as a flanker campaign. And what we developed was the World of Red Bull campaign, which utilizes all our existing and inspirational footage. Um, and then we complement this on a local level through our grassroots marketing program. Um, and we try and then add a local face to a global brand. And this particular World of Red Bull strategy and campaign has really gone out to generate millions and millions of impressions, and it really seems to inspire our consumers. So what I'm going to do is just show you a, a clip of one of the World of Red Bull campaigns. I think it's human nature to want to explore. To find your line and go beyond it. said yourself. Um, as you can see from <clears throat> that particular campaign, a, a lot of the actual footage in there it comes from our event marketing strategy and this is what a lot of people know Red Bull for. And the reason that we do this is it's ready to bring the world of Red Bull to life and create content that others talk about. Um, the characteristics of Red Bull events is that we're not a traditional sponsor. Um, Red Bull pretty much goes out and innovates, conceives, implements, executes, and owns the entire process. We make sure that our events are innovative and inspirational. It's key that they're in unique locations and concept. And we focus on participants first. They really are the heroes of the day. Um, from an event marketing perspective, we do it in, in, in two spheres. One is sports marketing and the other is culture marketing. And the reason that we do this is to really try and deliver epic performances and experiences, create stories around our product, and ultimately this builds credibility for the brand. Um, a really interesting pillar and the one that is set up first whenever we enter a new market is the Red Bull Consumer Collecting Program. Um, and this started off in Austria when, when obviously this product was launched and it was a brand new category. They needed to find a way that we could really go out and educate consumers. And what they did was they set up a program whereby we would go out to find consumers in a moment of need. So when they needed the energy, introduce them to the product for the consumers then to consume it and feel the benefits live and direct. And the way that this started off excuse me, was with the first little mini in Austria, and this literally was the first one that went out around the Austrian Alps to engage with consumers, either at work, at sports, um, while studying. And what this has done is grown into a global campaign with minis on the road in 150 markets every single day, literally going out to find consumers. And then finally, opinion leader marketing is really important to us. This is all about reinforcing the credibility of the brand. And we really look for key people that represent 
the brand itself through their personalities and the feats and the areas of interest that they partake in. And we mix the two between culture and sport, representing both the body and the mind side of the brand. So we try and balance the brand image. We're definitely not a typical sponsor. This is a long-term relationship that is usually done on a handshake initially. And then we work with these opinion leaders to help bring a lot of their ideas to life. Um, and most importantly is that our opinion leaders should be honest and convince consumers and consume the product on a regular basis as part of their lifestyle. So really, if we try and wrap up the whole marketing approach from a rebel perspective, we have one mission, and that pretty much is to give wings to people and ideas. Um, in 2007, we set up an extension of the Red Bull brand um, under an umbrella called the Red Bull Media House. Um, and this is literally an entity that produces premium and original content for us. And we distribute this content across a multitude of platforms. And the mission of the Red Bull Media House is to really to utilize the Red Bull to fascinate. So the way that that works for us is we have the can business and we generate all of this content. Um, and the content then feeds into the media house. The idea is the media house produces and distributes on behalf of the can business, and this pays back into the brand. And underneath the Red Bull Media House, there's a number of own media properties ranging from printed magazines, managing our own channels, a record label, um, and a TV station in Austria. So in 2010, the Red Bull Media House was launched in the US, and um, we really strive to become content providers for some of the most prolific um, broadcasters and distribution channels. And we've had some great strides that have taken place over the last couple of years. So from a Red Bull perspective, we know that it's never been easier to reach consumers, yet it's never been harder to really engage them. Um, and I think the Red Bull Stratus project was certainly a project that managed to cross um, those boundaries and those challenges. The way that Red Bull operates is really we try and operate in a culture as opposed to just a category. And this is really important and it's, once again, at the heart of everything we do. If we look at the Red Bull Stratus project, 53 years ago, there was an Air Force captain by the name of Joe Kittinger who lifted off from Earth in a helium balloon and he did something incredible at 102,000 feet, was he jumped. Um, and this was the original photograph that was taken then and this was a comment from Neil Armstrong and this was one of the most exciting pictures for him in aerospace photography. So how it all started from a Red Bull perspective was Felix Baumgartner, um, who is a long-standing Red Bull athlete and a prolific base and skydiver, along with an aerospace expert by the name of Art Thompson. They shared their vision with Red Bull. And the, uh, the idea was to explore the potential of doing a space dive. From a Red Bull perspective, it was a great idea, but obviously there were a lot of challenges ahead. This was really out of our comfort zone. Um, and before we went into all of the planning, the, the core team in Austria really wanted to make sure that this project stood for really an authentic mission. And this was at the backbone. This was not to be another record stunt. We really set out to inspire people, to make a lasting contribution to space and science, um, and to make sure that this awe-inspiring footage was made accessible to the world and ideally through a live broadcast. So in October 2012, Felix left Earth uh, to become the first man to attempt to break the speed of sound with his own body. But before he could go up, we had to assemble a series of experts and really go back to the roots to design and develop a capsule that would, would withstand all the requirements. We had to redesign all the spacesuits and the carried equipment that he would need. N number of ballooning tests and flight operation tests had to be undertaken. And then we had to get Felix really comfortable into the spacesuit because it was a pressurized spacesuit and he wasn't used to this environment. So it took about three or four years to get all of these components in play before he could actually take off. And then a big challenge for us in the Red Bull Media House was how we were going to build the next generation of live production unit. Because ultimately we had to build a mini, a mini, space, a mini space studio um, at the end of the Earth's atmosphere. So some of the achievements was he actually had the highest exit altitude at 127,000 feet. He managed to break the speed of sound. Um, he had a vertical distance freefall of close to 120,000 feet. And he had the highest manned balloon ascent at 128,000 feet. So for all intents and purposes, a really, really successful um, project. But back on, on the ground, 
We had to engage 150 of our communication managers around the world. And they went out to do live broadcast deals with 80 partners in 50 countries. And on the day, they managed to secure 50 million live TV views. The web strategy was obviously a key, key component to this whole project. Um, and we partnered with YouTube as the global live stream partner. And the communication network once again went out and signed up 280 media partners who embedded the YouTube player into their sites. And the results of the day were actually outstanding. There were 52 million live broadcast views on the web, 9.5 million concurrent viewers. So basically 8% of all the internet bandwidth on the day of the jump was used to watch this particular project. Um, and we had over 70 million VOD views subsequently. Just to put the 9.5 million concurrent views into perspective, the 2012 Super Bowl had 2.1 million, if I'm not mistaken. Um, from a traditional media point of view, there were over 150 <clears throat> plus front pages around the world and just over 10,000 individual broadcast hits on TV, uh, on global television stations. This is one week after the event itself. Um, and then from a social media perspective, I mean, we, the, the engagement rate was just incredible with in excess of over 9 million tweets on Twitter. And I think if we, if I, I'm taking all of, all of that into account, and I think there was one particular tweet from a gentleman by the name of Daniel who I think really summed up this whole project. Um, and that was that awkward moment when you realize an energy drink has a better space program than your nation. <laughs> So that was very quick. I'll speak quickly. Apologies, but thank you very much for your time and your attention.